This type of problem, quite a few steps. So I always like to draw a picture. Uh, not really a picture picture, sort of just something that kind of helps me to understand what's going on. So we're taking some ice at minus 20 degrees Celsius and we're warming it up all the way to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, now here's the thing. We're stopping at zero degrees Celsius for a phase change. So we're driving along, stopping for the phase change, and then going up to 30. Now, there's three different types of calculations that must be added here to figure out how much energy that 50 grams of water, of ice, actually needs in order to get from here to here. Minus 20 to zero, mc delta t, because it's a temperature change. At zero, phase change, nh. From zero to 30, temperature change, mc delta t. So, in the formula, heat loss equals heat gained, where the environment, again, something in the environment and the surroundings is losing heat to this system, which is the ice cube, which is gaining the heat. It's gaining the heat in three ways. Two kinetic ways, two temperature changes, and one phase change. Now, you might say, well, yeah, well, Kim, guy, look, 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 why don't you just go from minus 20 to 30, because that's like one big temperature change there and the phase change involved. Ah, because the heat capacity for water as a solid as opposed to water as a liquid from 0 to 30 is different. So you got to do a different mc delta t. Here it is. The heat loss equals the mc delta t for the ice warming up to 0 plus the phase change. That's the phase change when the water turns from ice to liquid. And this, of course, is the temperature change for the warming of the water from zero all the way to 30. So this is the water liquid, this is the phase change, and this is the water as a solid going from minus 20 to zero. Plug in the numbers. Okay, the way it looks is this. This term is actually here, this term is here, and this term is here. We're going to add them all together to come up with our answer. Now, what I plugged in was, for the mass, here and in here, the 50 grams, but not in terms of grams, but that should be a kg. I turned them all into kilograms because I know that the big H, the molar heat, is in the unit kilojoules. And so therefore, I want to keep my answer in kilojoules in the end. Now, you don't have to do that. You can actually turn that into joules per mole and turn that 6.01 kilojoules per mole into 6.01 times 10 to the 3 joules per mole. But look, on diploma exams or major uh, uh, exam finals that uh, I have seen, the one thing that gets you and, the, and, and that's almost intentionally done to see if you're paying attention is to interchange numbers that will arrive at joules for one answer and maybe kilojoules for another and they can't be directly added together. So you've got to be so careful and make sure everything's the same unit. So I'm turning every, all the masses into kilograms. So the heat capacities are written as, for water, as ice, 2.00 kilojoules per kilogram degrees Celsius. Remember, that's legitimate. So now the kilograms cancel and you're left with kilojoules. And then, now I know this sounds kind of weird, but stay with me. All of the temperature changes that you ever write must be, Temperature changes must be a positive number. Don't make it a negative. If you went negative 20 in here as a temperature change, your number is going to be negative. And then you're going to add it to two others, and you're going to get less than you should have in terms of total amount of energy at the end. All your delta Ts are positive. Now look, I always like to plug in an initial and a final temperature. This one here being, of course, the final temperature in this calculation. This is initial, initial minus final here. But the point is, it doesn't matter which way you plug it in, as long as you can get the difference between these two is positive. So look what I did. I know it looks kind of goofy, but I said 0 minus negative 20. Now that makes it a positive number. I plug in my initial and final and make it positive. So when you multiply that out, you get a number. I actually get the number 2, 2 kilojoules. 50 grams. It's okay to keep this in grams because you're just taking this n term here, and it's grams divided by molar mass to keep moles. Moles times kilojoules per mole is going to give you an amount here in kilojoules. So kilojoules, kilojoules, and then mass of the water is 
50 grams again, but in kilograms, times 4.19, which is the heat capacity of water as a liquid, right? And then times the temperature change of 30 minus 0. That's the difference here. So, so the 30 minus 0 is a positive number. You plug it in now, and you get kilojoules here. Add these three together, you get 24.961, but you know that's not the answer because, go back in your question, there's three significant digits virtually everywhere. This number 0 is exactly 0. And so therefore, exactly 0 or 100 degrees Celsius, which are those phase change temperatures, they're exact points. They have an infinite number of significant digits being exact numbers. So, infinite, infinite, those are definitely not your least number of significant digits, but 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, three keep 3. So the answer is actually 25.0 kilojoules that are absorbed. It's a long calculation, but you break it down, you start off with the basic principle of heat loss equals heat gain, and you never go wrong.